This video is created in partnership with Bob's Red Mill. Hey everyone, Chef Billy Parisi here. Thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel. And today I'm really excited to show you one of my favorite things of all time, my homemade pizza crust. The first thing, of course, we need to make our dough. And I'm going to be using Bob's Red Mill Artisan Bread Flour. It's incredibly high in protein, making it perfect for just about any bread recipe you have, whether it be a baguette or a pizza dough like this. And in combination with the artisan bread flour, I'm going to add in a little bit of Bob's Red Mill whole wheat flour. This is gonna add a little bit of body and complexity to the dough recipe that I'm using. And it will also help brown out the outside of our crust really, really well and make it really brown in the inside because the wheat is obviously a little bit darker than the artisan bread flour. So what we wanna do is simply combine that with the artisan bread flour. We're next gonna sprinkle in our salt and yeast. And of course, last but not least, we want to measure out our water. It's about 98 to 100 degrees, not incredibly hot, not cool, kind of lukewarm to the touch. And I'm measuring everything in grams, and you should absolutely be sure to do this too if you want this dough recipe to come out perfect. We're going to pour that right into a bowl with the flour, salt, and yeast. And we want to mix it together. So go ahead and roll up your sleeves and get busy mixing it with your fingers. You can absolutely use a bread whisk or dough whisk if you'd like. It's kind of got thick wires on it. But I really, really like using my hands because I can feel when the salt and the yeast are becoming incorporated into the dough. Yes, you're going to get dirty, but honestly, this is the way to do it. Go ahead and wrap it in plastic wrap. This is going to keep it safe from any outside things falling in it and kind of keep that temperature uh, perfect. And I always like to put it right on top of a towel because the granite countertops can get cool. And right now we're gonna let it sit for an hour and 30 minutes before we come back to remove the plastic and give the dough a little bit of stretch and fold. Uh, we do this to help the dough sort of come together and obviously to incorporate some more air into it. So after giving it a few turns and folds, we're gonna fold it back up and let it sit for another hour and a half before we can start forming our pizza dough balls. So go ahead and use that artisan bread flour and dust a clean surface. And next we wanna add the dough right to the top of that flour. It's going to be a little bit sticky, a little bit wet. This is absolutely normal and perfect for what we're trying to do. Go ahead and also sprinkle the top of the dough with a little bit of flour. And we're gonna make two really simple folds. Fold it over, fold it over again. We're gonna turn it and fold it one more time. And what we wanna do now is start sort of making it into a ball. And I sort of use this cupping motion by going around the dough and underneath to sort of close and seal everything in. And now we use a pastry knife to separate it into four individual dough balls. You can absolutely use a knife if you don't have one of these bench knives. Once it is split up, we wanna do that exact same thing as we did before by using that cupping motion for each of these individual little dough balls until they become perfect little round doughs that we will use for our pizza crust. So as you can see, this recipe will make four pizzas for you. And once they are formed, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour on a sheet tray dusted with parchment paper and add the dough balls right onto there because they need to rest again for another hour to an hour and a half. I recommend 90 minutes if you have time. And I'm sure you can tell so far this isn't your normal mom's recipe. This is going to take some time. This is what you're going to find in a pizza restaurant. So while the dough is resting, it's perfect time to add our pizza stone to the oven. We are gonna crank up the heat to a scorching 500 degrees. This is going to cook our pizza fast and incredibly brown. What we do next is prep up some ingredients. This is completely up to you. I've got some shredded mozzarella, some sliced mozzarella, 
and I'm going to use some crushed tomatoes. I don't make pizza sauce anymore because I find crushed tomatoes to be the best option. Also got some arugula, pepperoni, a little bit of prosciutto ham. The toppings are completely up to you. I'm just really trying to focus in on the pizza crust itself. So next, what we wanna do is begin to form our pizza dough. So using the bench knife, scrape it off. And as you can see, the dough has sort of doubled in size. It's gone a little bit widthwise, but um, it's definitely bigger in size. And I wish I had a great technique to tell you about or show you about how to stretch out dough. I sort of just use a combination of pressing and stretching until it gets to that perfect size about, I don't know, 12 to 14 inches in diameter. And I make sure to leave a little bit of dough on the crust, try to make that a little bit thicker area. And then what you wanna do is simply transfer it to your pizza paddle board, give it a few extra stretches because it will sort of move around a little bit. And then it's really about adding on your toppings. I'm gonna to use the crushed tomatoes that I poured into the bowl and I'm gonna spread it out as evenly as possible, leaving about a half to three quarter inches around the outside for the crust. Next, sprinkle on your mozzarella cheese and followed up by adding on our fresh sliced mozzarella. This is going to be a really cheesy pizza. I want to add some pepperoni because it's still probably my favorite topping of all time and some fresh basil leaves. Yes, they will crisp up a little bit in the oven, but they still maintain their delicious flavor. So add as many on as you'd like because they definitely shrink up in size as well. And last but not least, you wanna season it very, very well with salt. I'm not gonna use pepper because the pepperoni has a little spice to it. And now we go right to that oven on 500 degrees. First, we're gonna sprinkle on a little semolina flour. This is going to help our dough release from the stone. You've probably seen some semolina on the bottom of your pizza whenever you order it from your local favorite spot and we're gonna cook it for five to six minutes on 500 degrees before we come back and give it a little turn. Be careful, it's going to be hot, but we wanna make sure it cooks really evenly. So we just give it a 180 degree turn and we cook it for another five to seven minutes or until the crust is completely golden brown and the cheese is melted, just like you can see here. This is absolute perfection. You've literally made a pizza that looks like it came out of a restaurant. The cheese is melty, the basil is crisp, it looks amazing, and the crust is probably my favorite part of this entire thing, as it should be for any pizza. So go ahead and give it a slice and let's try it out. Okay, pizza is finished, the oven's still going. I got a ton of other ingredients because when I'm done with this video, I'm gonna keep making pizzas. It looks amazing, it smells amazing. You can see the nice, light, fluffy crust. Of course, let's give this thing a taste. Whoa. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. It's so cheesy. The crust is so light and fluffy. You can see the nice holes in the crust, just like that bread recipe that I made a few weeks ago. It's absolutely delicious. Thanks so much, Bob's Red Mill, for making most amazing whole wheat flour and pastry flour so I can make this pizza. I've got a lot of other pizzas to eat, to make. We'll catch up with you next time. Again, don't forget to sub the channel. We'll see you later.